Good morning, good afternoon, and good day to all my blessed beloveds out there in living and thriving land. You are watching Living and Thriving with Rusty, and I am Rusty. It is amazing right now. I can't even tell you how stellar everything has been. A lot of people have complained about this time, and for me, I'm just, oh my God, I am kicking ass right now. I do uh, a lot of coaching in goal setting and setting up priorities in people's lives. Writing your own mission statement is huge. Taking time out is huge. But what's even larger is to find out where you're wasting your time and your space. So I'm a full-time single mom. And for those of you who follow me on my Facebook, I listed out everything that I accomplished in the last six years of being jailed, being homeless, and all of the struggles and trials and tribulations of relocating to provide safety for my daughter and I. Aside from the tears and the tissues, I've written 13 books. I have been all over the world hosting interviews with people, and I've interviewed more than 1,400 people. There are 24 hours in a day. I sleep about four to five. And I've found five hours in my day where I can actually be productive and crush my goals. And all I can say is, oh my God, get with it. You guys, if you could feel the cosmic energy pouring out of my body right now and the excitement of all that I've accomplished in six years, even with the bullshittery, Life happens, bills happen, ex-husbands who are abusive happen, and some ex-wives, but I don't know about that part. <laughs> you can do it, find your time wasters. Now, fair disclosure, because I'm extremely competitive with myself, it's just I'm the only redhead in the family, so, you know, gotta be stubborn. I downloaded an app, I, you know, I taught at your own university this past weekend in regards to goal crushing. And somebody asked me this great question about having somebody to um, hold you accountable. At the end of the day, the only person that's gonna hold you accountable is you. You're the one who's paying your bills. If anybody's sucking up your time, they better be paying your bills or you move on. That's philosophy. That's the only philosophy you can live by. You don't want people sucking up your time. No drama llamas, no toxic warriors, no energy vampires. Get rid of them all. Lose them. They're not necessary. They're not paying your bills. And I had told her that one of the things that I like to do is I have an app on my phone that tells me my productivity time. It actually looks into all my social media. It looks into all my emails, everything that I do. I've had seven seven days off in 28 days. Not saying that's healthy. I'm very competitive. But my point is, seven days off in 28 days, what have you done? I've hosted by the end of tomorrow, I will have hosted 153 people on this show to get me set up all the way to September, August, September, October, November. Why? Because I'm crushing my goals. Who's paying my bills? I'm paying my bills. Who wants my big dream? I want my big dream. The only person who's going to do it is you. So when it comes down to the nitty gritty, this is a great time period to reinvent, reinvest, and get excited about life because it is beautiful. It's amazing to watch the sunrise and to feel the cool breeze and to see people laugh and to just get rid of all that toxic stuff. I literally had to unsubscribe from 14 newsletters that I didn't even realize I was on. That's a time waster. So, mommy lecture over. I am stupid crazy excited about having Connie on today because she's gonna talk to us about pain and not the kind of pain that I like to talk about, which is get up off your ass and do something. It's the kind of pain in your body, like the achy pain stuff. And it's a pandemic and most of us are being kind of lazy. I know that my buttons are starting to social distance. Thank God for yoga pants. Connie, how are you today? I am fantastic. Are I you, loved listening to you, oh my are God. You happy? Like, I, yes. I am. yes, yes. Yes, I loved listening to you and what you've done, and you are absolutely right. If you are not doing it now, you're crazy. It is the world needs your voice. 
everybody's it needs you to show up it needs you to show up bright and full and and in your place of joy no matter if you're in the deepest pain and that's what i talk about that's what i get my clients to um and physical pain does mean you got to get up off your ass well <laughs> connie i have to tell you i'm getting old girl i'm getting old i kind of have to do the whole hum to get up off i gotta my tell ass. you i'm i'm older than you <laughs> and this i know <laughs> so I'm 64, and if I can move it, if, you know what I mean? There are no excuses. My, I have 92-year-olds in my class. I know, and that's what I loved about it when I was stalking you. I absolutely really loved <laughs> what you do. Um, I normally don't actually check my guests out because I like it to be a really casual. We're sitting at a bar or a cafe. We just right. met kind of thing. Right, right. But um, there was a couple of things that intrigued me about you, and I'm like, oh, is she real? Does she really do that? <laughs> Because, I mean, you have to understand yeah. what goes on behind the scenes. You know, yeah. I get hundreds of emails. And right. some people are not really living and thriving. Could be. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But, yeah. you know. And yeah. so I was like, is she really? And I absolutely loved it. So tell us more about joy. Because, as you know, I'm an effervescent kind of soul. And joy yeah. is my middle name. There you go. There you go. So people are funny about joy. People are funny about joy. Joy is available to all of us. And um, I started writing about joy. And I got to tell you, the worst thing started happening. And isn't that interesting? Because it's showing up. Okay, so now you got to walk the talk, right? And um, so it, joy is, people have a thing that joy has to be big. It has to be, but no, joy is what we were saying before. It is waking up seeing the sunrise, having a first sip of coffee or tea, being knowing that everyone in your home is safe, knowing that you are healthy, that you are gonna get through this, that you are gonna thrive through this, that you are gonna be, get on top of it, that, that learning, even if you have no idea what your vision or your dream is, the opportunity to decide something new in any given moment, that you can change who you are, change where you're going, change what you're doing. It is the small steps we do day in and day out that make a huge difference. Listen, you can make the best cookies and muffins right now and you're a rock star because your neighbors need it, your, your, your family needs it. And any little, you know, it's the ripple in, that, in, the, in the pond that we're looking for right now. We're looking for everybody to show up and be light. And that's what joy is. Joy is, is light. It's a, definitely, I found over the years, it's a, a, a combination of things. It's being aware, self-accepting. Mm -hmm. It is yeah. really taking that breath and taking that time out because we have lived so busily, filling and yes. hiding and masking. Mm -hmm. And when you just stop, stop. And this is a cosmic reset. That's why I'm absolutely in love with the time period. I'm not in love with why we're yeah, here no, or how. No, yeah, right. Any of that stuff I don't own, I'm not in love with that, but I'm in love with the fact that this is a cosmic yes. reset. Yes, yes. And hey, listen, you know, uh, we all came to a screeching halt. I have a busy studio in Los Angeles and it's empty. But, you know, I knew, I woke up a couple days in and I said, I have to do something to serve. That's what I do. And so I started making videos and I started sending them out to my clients, to anybody who wants to join in. They're 10 minute videos, meditation, inspiration. From that then I got my virtual class going. I've been teaching for 10, 12 weeks, a virtual mat class, teach Monday night meditation. Classes are, meditation classes, $5. Matt class is $10, so it's affordable. It's for everyone. And it's really to get people moving and thriving and feeling good. Hey, listen, you can choose how you want to feel in every moment, whether it's this, being in chronic pain. And that's when my, my clients come to me in chronic pain. They've seen every doctor, and they're willing to do something different because that's my question. Tell me, what, tell me the story. And I'm like, okay, that's the story. Now let's take that story and let's put it away. And let's tell a different story. Right? Because as you know, every story that you tell defines 
who you are in that moment and who you want to be. And so if you want to be different, let's tell a better, different, enthusiastic, fantastic, strong, I feel great in my body kind of story. And then let's do the steps. We're not just going to dream on it. We're going to take the steps that we need to, to move you forward. I love that. And it's something that takes practice because yeah. you have to sure. feel past your fears and fears yeah. in any aspect of your life is your largest block. That's your largest right. roadblock. Right. And when you get to a place where you're like, okay, this is my history. This is my yeah. timeline. Right. And what I'd like to create is I'm the queen of England. Sorry. Um, right. <laughs> but whatever it is, you know, right. what, yeah you can make happen, you can make happen, right. but you have to put the steps towards the work. It's always right. going to be work and you can have fun with your work. I have uh -huh. a Nerf gun. I have a water yeah. gun. You know, yeah. I have my toys that I play with while I work, right. Um, right. but I still work. Right. Right. And, and, and it's also, I think, especially in dealing with chronic pain, because people come to me, well, you don't understand. I, I, I said, I do understand. I have had chronic pain my entire life, but it's a gift. If you could think of your pain as a gift, what's it telling you? Where is it leading you? What are the possibilities? And all of a sudden with that paradigm shift and journaling and, and trying to figure out, because it, it comes from you. I mean, you know, I can say, do this, do that, but, but, but it's all you. It's you doing it and discovering and, and finding, as all of this is us, we have it within all of us. Um, it, it just, it's that shift. And I think we all just need that, that small paradigm shift and it makes a huge difference. It just, well, it does. I, I also think that you have to be ready. You have to be yeah, willing of course. to, um, yeah. I always say find a partner in crime. Like if you have right. a friend that's willing to go and experiment, yeah. I love to belly dance and I, I have absolutely no agility whatsoever, but right. That's okay. That's my history. I still have fun. It's fun. It's silly. It's yeah. black, you know, and I'm with a girl. Yes. Um, but experimenting, I think that's a huge part of life Absolutely. is the experience of experimenting. So what kinds of things do you teach? I know because I stalked you, but they don't know. So, <laughs> yeah. so I have been a Pilates teacher for 20 years. I have a Pilates studio. Uh, so I teach Pilates transformational movement. So I get people moving who have never moved before. I get people move who are in chronic pain and we move so that they can, we move below the pain. So they're not in pain. So we get, do small movements. We get people breathing who've never breathed before. We change the mindset. So I do movement, mindset, and meditation. And through those three things, really get a shift in the brain. But as uh, I move through Pilates, it's what I love to do. I love all movement. I was a dancer originally, started off as a dancer in New York. Um, but this is my, what really sings to my body. I also do yoga. Um, you know, I do everything. I do bar, I do, I do anything out there. Um, but movement is a game changer and we have to move our bodies 30 minutes a day. Now, people go, I don't have 30 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. No, I, don't, I, I don't ever allow the excuse that nobody yeah. has any. I'm a single no. mom and I find the time and I work right. three jobs. So <laughs> you yeah, got yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And you have time. And it's also, do you choose you? Yeah. If I choose me, if I go, you know what? I am the most important person. I am going to take care. Yeah, I do want to shift. Then I'm going to change the way I eat. I'm going to eat healthier because I want to. You know, and listen, in this time, my, my daughter uh, was living in New York. She, we brought her home. She's been cooking and, and, and baking, and it's like, wow, we've been eating really well. Um, I don't mean that, I, but I mean, you know, you take care of yourself because you want to. You wake up earlier. The first thing I'm going to tell you is don't pick this up. Don't pick that up first thing in the morning. Let yourself have that first 30 minutes of the day and, and sit in quiet sit in breath, sit in whatever, and just allow your body and your brain to be quiet. Um, huge, huge, huge. And then you can journal. And then, you know, I have a, make people do a joy journal where they write down five or six things that bring them joy. Little things, things they notice around their room, because whatever you think about expands. And so it's just those, that, the, that shift 
Um, but moving your body is huge. Stretching, I do myofascial self-care release. I use the foam roller, I use balls, because uh, we have tension and we have tension now more than ever. I mean, I think with everyone focusing on Zoom, uh, listen, my husband's working from home, my daughter's working from home, my son's working from home, everyone's on Zoom and they're hyper-focused and, and, and that's, it's stressful. I think it's called Zoom fatigue, they've, they've uh, uh, called it. Uh, you know, so we need to have that quiet in our brain. Now, a lot of people are gonna say, I, I can't meditate because I can't stop my brain. You're never gonna stop your brain. Your brain is primed for the negative bias. So your brain is always looking for danger, 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 danger. And that's how we've survived. So it's just taking a step back. And so what I do is yoga nidra self-guided meditation. Uh, and it's done, it's done lying down. You have a blanket on you, a pillow. I mean, it's cozy as it gets. The hardest thing is to try to stay awake, not fall asleep. Is there a barista? What? A barista? <laughs> uh, no barista. That, that's, but th that, that would be an upgrade. You're right. You're right. Uh, but it allows you to go out of the brain into your heart and it allows you to take a step back and to, and to, and the minute you do, the minute we take a step back and we do meditation, it allows us to deal with the world in an easier way. We know we can't change anything out there. I can't change anything out there. The only thing I can change is me. I can change how I react. So I don't have to, you know, when, you know, you're driving and someone cuts you off and you're like, oh, I'm so mad, you know, that kind of thing. I can change that by saying, oh, okay, somebody, you never know what has happened to the person in front of you five seconds before, you know, they've reacted to you. They could have gotten the worst phone call of their life. They could have lost their job. They could have lost their, you know, a family member, somebody sick, they're sick. You don't know. And we jump into judgments. So it allows you to take a step back and to just be like, okay, I can take care of me and I can, I can take care of me today. I am a humor-based person. I find that the only way to live is live in humor and find the funniest bits of it. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I watched a lot of Looney Tunes was when I was a kid. We didn't yeah. actually have TV, but when we had access to TV, that was what I'd watch. And a lot of comedies, that sort of thing. And when somebody cuts me off, I'm always thinking of something that's like, you know, the missile on the uh, right, yeah. road runner or something. <laughs> and, and that kind of diffuses that initial spark of, you want to drop the F-bomb, but I like to right. save those for other times. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I'm reserving them. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But it's actually a good transition um, because I feel like we are in kind of this caustic place mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right now. There are a lot of individuals that are fuming and toxic when normally they wouldn't be as percolating. Right. Yeah. Um, and I have found that I'm just deleting people. I don't oh, need it in no my doubt. space. I don't need it in my life. It's a toxic wash. Right. Um, you know, if, if it's something very ignorant that I know, it's just an energy thing. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm on a different Absolutely. vibration. But for people who are not like that, like me, <laughs> in the right. delete happy mode, what do you recommend for um, people who are just starting to become more aware that there might be people in their life that they don't need to listen to? Well, I think, you know, who you surround yourself, right? Your, your life is accumulation of the five people that you surround yourself with. Now, now it might be a little more difficult because we're, we're in isolation more. But I think if somebody doesn't make you feel good, either on the phone, on Zoom, a friendship, a family member, it doesn't matter. You really have to say, does this serve me? And especially if this is new to you, you might not even know what serves you. And so I always take people back to their breath. Focused breathing is a huge thing for me, um, especially when people don't know where to begin. And I really think that it, it begins with you. And focused breathing is just inhaling for two counts, holding your breath for two counts, and then slowly exhaling it. And you can do this eight to 10 times. You just sit in a chair. You can be anywhere. You can keep your eyes open if it doesn't feel comfortable to close your eyes or close your eyes. And I think it just brings you back to presence. 
And I think in the present moment, which is the only moment that matters, but it's difficult for us, right? Because we're always in worry or always in regret. Um, that's, that's where we live between. And I think when somebody is like not sure about the people around them or, or, or even themselves, they're so angry by all of this and everything makes them angry and every Facebook post and Instagram and, and out there is anger and, and they're angry and they don't even sometimes even know what they're angry about. I think, as you said in the beginning, and, and this was, I think for all of us, the silence. It's the silence, the quiet, because in the end, you are again left with yourself. But I think that's what, in the beginning, it was the silence. It was like, oh my God. And, then, and I have to tell you that I appreciate the silence and I appreciate this time, this pause. And in my life, I will have to build this in. I was way too busy. I was way too, um, teaching way too much. And, um, and for me, what I found is I've always gardened. I, you know, live in Los Angeles if the weather's gorgeous, just, you know, like in Florida. And, um, but I re have kind of let it go because I've been so busy and I like went hardcore with my daughter. We have transformed our backyard as an oasis and gorgeous and it is uh, solace. And I started writing lessons from the garden and I started doing uh, videos on lessons from the garden because the garden has a lot to teach us and silence is one of them and nurturing is another. And the other thing is, you know, you plant a seed and you water it and it's like, it's not, you don't expect it to be a plant because you know there's a process, but we are so unforgiving of ourselves. And especially in this time of change, maybe you are gonna be different. Maybe you're somebody who's been really negative and you don't like that and you wanna try to move to a being a little bit more positive. It takes time, you know? One step, like with pain, one step forward, 10 steps back, two steps forward, eight steps back, one, you know. Unfortunately, there is nothing that's a straight line. Everything is a zigzag. And so um, that's kind of a long <laughs> way of answering your question. Sorry about that. But, you know, that's kind of what. I think, I think that if you were to really take a step outside of who you are as an individual, take a breath. Yeah. And look at yourself. Life would be very dull if we didn't have to go ziggy zag. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. We would just Absolutely. be bored spitless. We'd be licking lead paint for fun. We would. I know I would be. Yeah, I'll yeah, tell yeah. you, the first two weeks, I was an essential employee, and then I ended up with pneumonia. We thought I had COVID. Right. So it took some time, and then we found out it was just pneumonia. Thank God. And uh, I went stir crazy. It's not my right. personality, any stretch of the imagination. And so I rearranged my house all the way to the point where we would have to do vertical beds because <laughs> I rearranged it so much. There was no other way to do anything. Right. And then I, then I took a step out, outside of myself and I'm like, what are you doing? You crazy lady, right. you know, enjoy this. This is the Sit time. Down, that, yeah. You yeah. Know, you should. But it takes time to, to unwind from all that. You have to rewire. Doers. I want to be a doer. I'm doing, I'm doing. Yeah. And being is much different. Being and sitting in, because as you know, when we sit in silence, a lot of crap comes up. And, and again, that's what meditation allows you to notice. Listen, stuff goes through. If you're the sky, clouds go through. Nobody's going, hey cloud, you're blocking my view, right? The clouds go by. And if we can take that, that idea, that shift, and be like the sky and allow the good stuff, the bad stuff, any stuff, it's going to go by because it always does. When we go like this, oh, I don't want it to go. I don't want this to happen. I, it's That's the problem is the struggle, is the tension, is the uh, work so hard. When you can take a step back and drop your shoulders and take a breath, the crap moves by and there will be a time there will be a time when people look back. I'm sure in your neighborhood, I see families riding bikes and dads being with kids who are at work and who have not been around. Kids playing. The people up the street have made a volleyball in their driveway and every night, they haven't done that ever. I see people, I'm like, that they live in this neighborhood? They had kids? I didn't know. I mean, you know, you see dogs, cats. 
I mean, I've worked out on Zoom with babies, dogs, cats, husbands coming out of showers, not knowing that their wife was on Zoom working. Out. I mean, you know, it's been, woo, it's been, uh, it, it's been fantastic. It's been fantastic. So there will be a time when this will be like, wow, uh, amazing. But in the craziness of it all, it's, I, it, it's the silence. I, I am hopeful that people are going to incorporate this glorious time, meaning, right. you know, really looking at your lifestyle, looking at what you really want, what really matters, what's really authentic. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to have the cars and the big house and the swimming pool and the this and the that and all the things. That's great. Mm -hmm. Good for you. But if the world were really to collapse, is that really going to be right? the only thing right. that you, it's, it's not right. realistic. So right. I'm hoping that there's an evolutionary change where we approach things much more universally, much more loving, much more cosmically yeah. hugging, yeah. you know? Yeah, oh, um, I think so. Like you, there's a lot of things that I'm going to have been reincorporating into my life because I really like the silence. I, li I really like the gardening. I really, oh, yeah. I mean, it's just so meditative, you know? Oh, and then absolutely. My, my sweet potatoes are going crazy. They're like, they're climbing on everything. And I'm going, oh, I did that out of a bucket. Who knew? <laughs> I know, exactly, right? Same with my corn and everything else. I mean, it's just like, it's like, wow. I mean, unbelievable. It's, it's really lovely. So Miss Connie, we are running out of time and I could sit here and talk to you for hours because you're a sister from a different mister. And I absolutely <laughs> love the work that you do and I'm grateful for you and Thank what you. you do for other people. And I hope you keep shining on. But where Thank do we you. find more information about you? I know I'll have it in a link somewhere, but. Yes, 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 yes. So I'm on Facebook, Connie Brunner Pontero. Um, join me, Instagram, Connie Pontero. AbsolutePilatesUpstairs.com is my website. And on that, you can join me for my free stuff, my mat classes, uh, my meditation, Monday night meditation. And if they just text the word self, S-E-L-F dash care to 26786, you get my daily uh, short workouts, inspiration and meditation right to your phone. Yay. So quickly, yeah. for those of us who don't watch TV, I'm an anti-TV. Okay. So what is bar? I see it on a little Facebook ads and I'm like, this girl looks like a Barbie doll. I'm good. <laughs> uh, a bar, B-A-R-R-E, is like a ballet class. Ballet bar, it's called bar class. It's like, so it's ballet exercises, that's all. Oh, and okay. so they, they created a whole, there's a whole fitness line from that. That's all that is. Do old people get to do that? Yeah. Do get stuck? No, absolutely not. Everybody gets to, to do. I got to tell you, in my class, I got 20 and I got 81 year olds. And they're I, I, all doing, doing whatever they, you know, I believe, I'm a huge believe in mod modification. You can't do a push-up. I have you do a push-ups against the wall. There is no excuse. My father lived till 101 and a half, and he played golf three times a week. He walked the golf course. You know what I mean? So there is, whatever your level is, there's a level of fitness. 30 minutes a day, lots of water. Those are the important things. I drink a half a gallon of water a day. I love it. I'm addicted. Yeah. Good. And I don't even put any weird stuff in it. I'm yeah. one of those natural. Wow. Girls. You're pure. You're pure. pure. Rest of you're pure. I love it. I love what you're doing. Please keep shining. Please keep working, doing all these shows, interviewing all the wonderful people that get to be on your show. Um, and uh, love what you do. Thank, Thank you. you. It's, Thank you. it's one of those things where I woke up like you wanting to be yeah. of service and how do I yeah. do that? And, yeah. um, it has been really inspirational and motivational and exciting. And I literally do five or six of these in a row. Wow. And it's, and like you said, there's zoom fatigue in there, but I get high yeah. off yeah. of yeah. all yeah. the beautiful things right. that you guys are right. doing. Yeah. You know, yeah. the, there's yeah. two kinds of groups that we know of on a regular basis. There is yeah. the fear, mean, bad guy, yeah. media stuff. Right. And then we have, you know, talk show hosts that do all A-list celebrities. Right. But then there's regular everyday people that are doing really amazing things and nobody right. talks about them. And they're the fabric right. that actually holds society together. Absolutely. Like what you do yeah. to help the 20 to 81 year olds you help give them strength and encouragement and love right. and self-love and appreciation and <gasps> breath and joy, baby. Joy. 
falling into joy. I love it. You were beautiful. When I come out to LA, I'll try to do your little bar thing, not get stuck, but it might be something like a Giselle and a heel. Well, you know, anytime I teach 11 o'clock, uh, which 11, 12, 1, 2 o'clock, your time. Any of my, my Pilates mat classes, join me. Now, hold on now, lady. You just yep. said that you're going to cut back a little bit. Well, I know, but <laughs> yeah, you know, that doesn't mean I'm not teaching. I'm teaching. I'm a teacher. That's what I do. So. All right. Well, big hugs to you. Lots of love. Right. Thank you for shining right. on and we'll see you on the other side. All right. You got it. You're watching Living and Thriving with Rusty. I'm Rusty. And that was Patty and her information will be here, there, there. I don't know. It'll be somewhere. You'll see it. You'll find it. You can just get your Scooby-Doo snacks and you'll find her. What I love about her is that she is the embodiment of what I try to create here. She has the meditation and the breathing and the body movement and expanding your mind, expanding your body and having faith in yourself. Did I say that out loud? Yes, having faith in yourself. Girl, I'm telling you after everything that I've gone through and most of you have watched a lot of it, you can still kick some ass. You might have to do it in a stroller, maybe with a cane, maybe with a chair, um, but you can do this. So that's what living and thriving is about. It's liberating your mind reinventing who you want to be and getting rid of all those old beliefs all that crap just let go of those fears it's unnecessary until then know that you're loved know that you're beautiful do something wonderful for yourself like take a bath or sing at the top of your lungs open up your windows dance around naked your neighbors aren't watching anyway have some cookies it's okay because you're gonna go and join Connie's Pilates class online for free or even her longer class is like 10 bucks. That's, that's cheaper than PF Fitness or whatever that place is called. Go and do you and more importantly, be in service to others. Write somebody a letter, give somebody a hug with an elbow, tap your neighbor's door with your broomstick, ask them if they want some cookies. You know, you can be kind, everybody can. I love you, until next time. <laughs>